Hello, I'm Pam Carruthers of HealingStars.com. This is the chart for the full moon, 12th of November, set for London at 13.34 GMT. Always at a full moon, the sun is opposite the moon. And here we have the sun in Scorpio, 19 degrees. I'm using whole signs as a house. So here it is up here, 19 of Scorpio, and there's the moon, 19 of Taurus. Now the moon is very at home in the sign of Taurus. It's comfortable. It likes comfort, the moon. It's pleasure, it's food, it's wine. It's really beautiful, that moon. And the sun is incredibly close to Mercury. The sun and Mercury will literally together combust, or Kazumi it's actually called, on the 11th of November. Mercury is currently retrograding through Scorpio. It's now at 17. It's now a morning star, but you can't see it. It's too close to the sun. Notice a lot of activity is going on, not to do with the personal planets per se, but their connections to Saturn, not so much Uranus, Neptune, a strong connection to Neptune, if you look at this grid here, and also to Pluto. And we have a plethora of very positive connections. Anything in blue is positive, it's flowing. The squares to be challenging us, but also action, Mars. The sun in Scorpio is traditionally ruled by Mars. And currently Mars is in Libra, a sign where it's not strong. It wants to please people, Libra. It's to do with diplomacy. It's to do with Venus's energy. And the moon is in the sign, always of Taurus, to do with Venus. Currently, there's Venus over here. It's going through Sagittarius and it will be joining Jupiter. And that happens on November 24th. And that is very significant. So keep watching. I'll tell you more. But Mars uh, in Libra has been making a square, a tense angle, to both Saturn at 16 of Capricorn and Pluto at 21. However, it's moving past. There's a basic principle in astrology. When a planet is approaching another planet, it's stronger than when it's moved past. It's applying and separating. So Mars, that Mars energy is now separating from its tension with Saturn. That's good because Saturn blocks the energy of Mars in that configuration. Chiron is interesting also at this time because it's retrograding and it's at one degree of Aries. So what's going to happen is when Jupiter changes sign, which it does, Jupiter changes sign, not this month, but December the 2nd into Capricorn, then we're going to get a tension here with the wounded healer archetype. Meanwhile, a lot's going on this month. Mars does change sign into Scorpio on the 19th, and that's only a week away. And then it's in its own sign. Then it's strong. And we prefer a planet to be strong, to do what it's meant to be doing. And Scorpio, this planet of Mars, gives vitality to Scorpio sun signs. It's already got Mercury going through. All of us are going through Mercury retrograde. And that Mercury will go direct. And that happens on the 21st of November. The sun changes sign on the 22nd of November into Sagittarius. And Venus will go into Capricorn on the 26th of November. So we have a, quite a few things that are changing, and that often happens every month. But what I'm interested in is also showing you Ceres. Here is Ceres at 28 degrees of Sagittarius. And Ceres changes into Capricorn on the 16th of November. But Ceres is something that quite a few people have asked me about. And one report I sell called the Goddess Report goes into all the asteroid goddesses as, as well as Ceres, which is now a dwarf planet. And Ceres is connected to the 
story of Persephone being taken into the underworld. And Ceres is her mother, Ceres stroke Demeter. So it's very much about cereal, Ceres, cereal, uh, food, nourishment, and she is the goddess. So I want you to maybe be aware of what Ceres, what position she is in your birth chart. Now, as I mentioned, Venus. If the moon in Taurus is governed by Venus, which it is, we want to look at what is Venus doing? Well, Venus is in Sagittarius. So Venus is looking at truth, is looking at wisdom, higher knowledge. Sagittarius is a futuristic sign governed by Jupiter, still in Sagittarius. So that quest for truth is important for knowledge and knowledge that has meaning to it. Sagittarius is very much to do with that. And Mars, as I said earlier, is weak. It's, it's not happy. It's not helping at this full moon. But we do have connections in a very positive way with this Saturn-Pluto conjunction in Capricorn. And also we have good connections, you know, with that energy, with Neptune and the Moon. You can see all this, um, it's called a talent triangle going running here. And Neptune is also still connecting up in a very beautiful way to the nodes of the Moon, to do with our destiny, where we're heading in life, all of us. So the takeaway, if you like, is very much about, to me, what Venus is doing what Jupiter's doing, those two together. And on the 24th of this month, Venus and Jupiter join in Sagittarius, incredibly close to something we know as the galactic center. And that's a rare conjunction. I look forward 10 years, 12 years rather, I look back 12 years, it doesn't happen. So it's to something I believe is of importance. Now, the galactic center is the sun's sun. It's the center of the solar system. And it's connected very much to the Mayans, the Mayan calendar, but also takes us out of our daily routine into something much bigger than ourselves, very much about our higher vision. And Jupiter only goes to that position in the sky every 12 years. Venus can do it every year, but not with Jupiter. That's why I'm stressing how important that is. And I'm running a workshop in Hove, where I live, on the 23rd of November, very much about manifesting your future. Manifesting is taken very much in a way of, oh, a car parking space, as a, for instance, ask the angels, etc. Nothing wrong with that. But this is something much bigger that I'm encouraging people to focus and contemplate on. If you can't make that workshop, no problem, but you could do a one-to-one -one with me because if we don't have faith in life or belief that we can truly manifest our future, our dreams, then we're going to sabotage ourselves. And that is to do with the unconscious. Now, I am a sun sign Scorpio. I have Pluto very significant in my chart, and I've spent a long time studying with two extraordinary teachers, Chuck and Letsy Spazano. And the model that Chuck has engineered, <laughs> but through thousands of people on workshops, is process. And it talks very much about vision and how once we step into vision, it can be a, a spiritual vision, a shamanic vision, creativity, nothing wrong with that, you know, any kind of vision, something bigger than ourselves, the ego will definitely try and sabotage us and bring up all the beliefs that have laid hidden. So as I said, I'd encourage you to book a session with me to explore that if that is one of your problems in life. Full moons are to be enjoyed. <laughs> it's so wonderful to look up and see that fabulous full moon you know it's a 
our home, if you like. You can say the moon is very much about feelings, emotions, being at home with ourselves. And Taurus is very much to do with the heart and comfort and desire. So thank you for watching. It's a great story that the planets are showing us in the sky at this time. Enjoy. A Pam Carruthers of HealingStars.com.